Today I'm joined by Chris Bergson, my good friend. And we've been playing together for a long time, since we were about this big. And uh, so I thought it'd be fun today to do a class about duo playing, because um, we've done a lot of this in, and we just have a really natural thing. And so we're going to talk about different things we're going to play for you. And hopefully, if you have some questions, you can ask them. And uh, we're going to start with a Cole Porter tune called Everything I Love. And you're going to play the first. Yeah. Okay. All right. Come on. All right. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Sometimes in a duo situation, you might feel like, God, I have to like fill it up. Yeah. You know, but the flip side of that is to also approach it like there is a rhythm section. Yeah. And leave space and. Yeah. You know, because sometimes maybe you don't want to play bass lines, or maybe it'll, maybe you know, in certain instances, it might get in the way. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, that's the whole thing. You just listen and and respond. Yeah. You don't always know. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes less is more. Yeah. It makes it sound fuller with just those couple notes. Yeah. Why don't we do something like that on How Deep Is the Sure. Maybe we can start with some, maybe this guy tone playing, this comping, and, and build it up from there. So think about building the texture. Yeah. And um, also, yeah, you know, I was just going to throw this in there. I remember one of the big things that I learned about comping. Well, it started when I, like, my first semester of college, I went in my ensemble and I was all psyched and I was comping and the teacher stopped at class and he said, you know what Monk said? I said, what? He said, the cutest thing I ever did was lay out. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. But actually, well, he was right because I was probably being obnoxious and comping too much. <laughs> and, but it actually really, I really thought about it. I took it to heart and it really affected the way that I approached comping. Because sometimes it comes to be overbearing. Sure. And um, so, you know, later on I started to think about that really comping. Yeah, when you start the tune in motion, you hear the harmony. Mm -hmm. well, especially once the tune and the melody, and we've heard that. So, really, comping, we're not making the harmony happen, happen we're complementing it, we're coloring it. Right. So sometimes I like to think about it that way. It's, yeah, you don't need to play that C chord with the root there because it's obvious from the lines that you're playing. Yeah. But you, the lines that you're playing are so clear harmonically. I don't need to spell it. You're spelling it out, mm -hmm. and I might be adding a little bit of color to that. So that goes along with when you're playing with people who have a, have evolved their lines where the harmony is very clear in the melodies that they're playing. Yeah. <laughs> 